Welcome everyone. Today we will discuss problems related with genetic engineering. In this video, we will discuss problems related to the chapters of fundamental techniques of genetic engineering, where we will cover questions related to DNA's one footprinting. Apart from that, we will be covering questions from digestion and ligation of DNA molecules and also one question from restriction mapping. So let's start with the que first question. Now read the question very carefully. It says given below is the double strand DNA sequence in the absence which means you know this figure first and presence of binding protein, which are second and third. So in this schematic diagram, you can see double-stranded DNA of around eight nucleotides in length, both in the absence and presence of protein. Now, revising the concept of DNA is one footprinting essay. So it's a kind of a hint. Draw the autoradiography pattern, which we all know that it's a film with a bands on it for these samples, that means sample one, two, and three. One thing you need to remember for this particular question, we are considering that we all know that DNA is one cuts the phosphodiester bond. And for this particular question, we are considering that, in, that it is working on both the strand, that is both the upper and the lower strand. And, and we are, we are considering that it is making a single cut at a time. So that means total two cuts, one on the upper strand and the other on a lower strand. So remember DNA is one is a enzyme which, which cuts phosphodiester bond, but we are, we are controlling the reactions in such a way that it's making one cut at a time. Now, it's a simple diagram showing the process of DNA is one footprinting. One thing you need, need to remember is that you will only be able to see the fragments which are which are having a five prime p32 in the autoradiography because for that you need you need your dna samples to be five prime p32 label now even if you are considering that dna is one is going to make numerous cuts at at random sites but remember you will be getting bands only from those fragments which are carrying the 5 prime p32 so let's consider example let's let's say let's say dna's is dna's one is cutting at all these sites even though i have mentioned that just consider one cut at a time but even if like you are considering that these are making numerous cuts but remember we are get we are going to get we are going to get signal only from the first A, which is carrying a P32. In the second case, I'm going to get a signal from AT in which the P32 is carried at the five prime end. In, in somehow, at some time, we are going to get signals from AT, G, C, A, T, T, because this is the one which is present at the five prime end. Same holds true for the second and third. So look at this picture very carefully and then try to, try to draw the Auto radiography pattern for the first, second, and third. So first, we have a five prime p32 only on the upper strand. In the second, again we have only on the upper strand. But in the third, look at this diagram very carefully. We have a five prime p32 and on the upper strand as well as at the lower strand. Now, in all these cases, like the one and two, even if we are considering that DNA is one is making a cut on the lower strand, it should not bother me much. Why? Because because where is the P32 from? There is no P32 on the lower strand in case of the first and second. So I'm, even though the DNA is one is making cut and once you know these, these cuts are done, these samples are run on the denaturing page, denaturing polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. So I'm not supposed to get the bands on the film from the lower fragments. Why? Because those are not carrying the five prime P32, but this is not the case with the third sample. So, so let's try to draw the film and we'll just draw it for sample, sorry, sample one first. 
So if you can see, like, as I have asked you to consider, make if, if this DNA is one is making a single cut on a five prime site at a single time, we are going to one, we are going to get one fragment corresponding to five prime P32, which is which adenine is carrying. In the second case, I'm going to get a band 80. I'm just drawing those bands according to their molecular weight. In the third case, I'm going to get a fragment like I'm going to get many fragments, but on the radio, but on the auto radiography film, I'm going to get a signal from ATG. Then in the then later we are going to get a signal from ATGC, ATGC, later ATGCA. And total we are we are supposed to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's say it, consider it for the sample one. How about the sample two? Remember where the, the position where the protein is binding, those regions will not be exposed. Those nucleotides will not be exposed. The DNA one will not be able to work. This is the, this is the principle of the protein DNA binding, protein B, DNA binding. So like, Wherever on the double stranded DNA protein is binding, those nucleotides are not going to get exposed. DNA is one will not cleave, and that will give me the idea that where my protein is binding. So let's let's try to draw draw these fragments, which will get after DNA is one digestion. So of course we are going to get one, two, three fragments for sure, and those are going to be on the similar position. Three. How about the fourth? No. We're not going to get a cut after the four, fourth nucleotide. Why? Because that is not exposed. Same for the fifth. That, that position is occupied by the protein is no longer exposed. So DNA one will not cleave. Remember, for DNA to work, it, it needs a phosphodiester bond between the adjacent two nucleotides, but that is not exposed here. How about the sixth? Now, considering that even if this T is binding to the protein, but if, if the phosphodiester bond is exposed, the DNA is going to work. And what we are going to get, we are not going to get a, get a band corresponding to fourth and fifth, but we'll get a band corresponding to sixth. Same for the seventh. Now, what does this tell? This tells you that this is the reason. We all have seen the principle. If not, just go and revise my theory classes. So this is the reason where this particular protein is binding. Now, very carefully, we need to look at sample three. But remember, I do need to consider the lower band here. Why? Because DNA is going to work on both the strands, even in the case of the first and two, but I'm not bothered, bothered about the lower, lower strand in case of the first and two, because that is not labeled, but, but here it is labeled. So, so let's consider it is making a cut here at the same time here. So what I'm going to get, I'm going to get a signal from this reason as well as a signal from this reason. So I'm going to get a band corresponding to one, fine. Just try to draw it by your own and a band corresponding to seven. So this seven band is coming from the lower, lower strand because you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if it's making a cut here, you can consider any position, but I'm just considering one position at a time. In the second case, there is going to be cut at after T here and again after A here. So I'm going to get a band corresponding to two and six. How about the third? I'm going to get a band corresponding to three and a fifth. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to get a band corresponding to three, which I've already drawn, and fifth. How about the later steps? Yes, I am supposed to get a band. Band. I'm supposed to get a band from the upper strand corresponding to a sixth position. So just like case similar to the second one, two, three, four, five. The regions are not exposed. So there will be no cut, but there the phosphodiester bond of the six nucleotide is exposed. So there will be a cut. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So there will be again. So this is 
you will see a intense band because one fragment coming from the upper and the low and and the another fragment coming from the lower section and and you will see a intense band but since both of them are going to have the similar molecular weight you, you will not be able to distinguish i mean if the two molecules are of the same length how are you going to di distinguish in case of the gel electrophoresis now so on you just keep on keep on drawing the bands for the late, later fragments and you will realize that you are going to get fragments corresponding to 1 2 3 5 6 7 now look at here in case of the sample 3 if if my D, double dna strand is labeled on both this is labeled on both the ends on both the strands five prime on the upper and the five prime on the lo lower this will result in the wrong interpretation of data. So consider if I have to monitor the DNA binding sites, sorry, protein binding sites on the DNA. And if I'm, if, if I'm labeling both the upper and lower strands, this will give me the wrong interpretation of data. This will suggest me the wrong position. So that's according to sample third, my protein is binding only to the reason one, two, three, four, but this, this, this is not a true. It's binding both to the fourth and fifth. And also remember one thing, like in real, we are not going to have only seven or eight nucleotides. Those are going to be very, very big. And this protein is again, you know, will be interacting with the DNA, DNA at a, at a long patches. So it, th this is just a scenario where, where we need to understand that why it's not a good idea to label both the strands in case of the DNA's one footprinting. Why? Because if I'm going to label both the two strands, upper and lower with a five prime P32, that will result in the wrong interpretation of data. So that was the whole idea from this question that to make you realize that why it's not a good idea to label both the ends with a five prime P32 in case of DNA is one footprinting assay. I hope this concept should be clear to each and every one of you. Coming back to the second question. So it was from, from the restriction digestion and the ligation part. So you have chemically, let's read the question very carefully. You have chemically synthesized a double stranded DNA shown below. The sequences are given. If this DNA was cut with BSTY1, how many DNA fragments would you expect? Write out the sequence of these double stranded DNA, DNA fragments now. The, the recognition sequence is given R, G, A, T, C, Y. It is making a cut after R. I hope you all know that R represents purine here while the Y represents pyrimidine. Now let's try to find out those sequences R, G, A, T, C, Y, G, A, T, C. But, but is it R here? Purine, fine. How about this one? Y? So C is a pyrimidine, fine. So this seems to be okay. G A T C again G G A T C Y. Remember these restriction enzymes recognize the palindromic sequences. So I also need to make a cut on the lower strand. G A T C. I need to make a cut here. How about the other reasons presenting this double stranded sequence? G A T C G A T C G A T C. How about here? Now the problem here is that before G, in this case, there is a T which is not a purine, but a pyrimidine. And same after the C, you are having purine and not the pyrimidine. So we'll only consider this one. So there is one such sequence in this double stranded DNA. Now, if I'm going to digest this double stranded DNA with BSTY1, it will result in the formation of A, T, T, G, A, G, there will be a cut. How about the lower strand? T, A, A, C, T, C, C, T, A, G. Fine. Now after a cut, for the remaining of the portion, you are going to get G, A, T, C, C,
G T A A and you can keep on writing till three prime n. And and from the lower strands, what I'm supposed to get after a cut here? So G C A T T A. G C A T T N. You can keep on writing. So this is supposed to be five prime. I hope this should be clear to each and every one of you. So what kind of fence this enzyme is generating? It is generating five prime overhang. It is generating five prime overhang. It is generating cohesive ends, protruding ends. What is the second question? So this is done. The second part of the same question is that if the DNA zone ever was cut with KSP 221, another type 2 restriction enzyme, how many DNA fragments would you expect? So here, considering that this is a this is a linear DNA, we are getting two fragments. Sim similarly, we have to find out how many fragments will be generated after KSP 221 cut. Now it's a recognition sequence given TGA, TCA. So I need to look for sequence TGA, TCA, TGA, no, TGA, TCA, TGA, TCA, TGA, TGA, TCA, making a cut after first T. Similarly, for the lower, lower strand, I need to check TGA, TCA, making a cut after the T. So in the similar way, we need to write the fragments which I'm going to generate after KSP 221 cut. So 5 prime A, T, T, G, A, G, you can keep on writing till T. And then for the remaining part, what is the fragment which I'm going to get? G, A, T, C, a C G T C C A C G three prime n. Similarly, for the lower strand, I'm going to get T A A C T C, and this will correspond to something A C T. A, G. So this is going to be one fragment. The other fragment is going to be C, G, T, G, G, T, G, G, A, G, C, G, A, sorry, C, G, T, G, G, A, G, C. Am I making any mistake? C, G, T, G, G, A. Or maybe in the upper strand, G A T C A, G A T C A, C G C T C C, C G T C C, A C G, A C G. So I think it's going to be here C and then G and then a cut after T. So you are again going to get two fragments one and the two. Now, you just need to see there is a, going to be a longer fragment, which I have not, where I have not mentioned the entire nucleotide sequence. And then there is a, a smaller fragment where I have mentioned each and every nucleotide. Again, this is also, this is also a, a protruding ends. So five prime, three prime, three prime, five prime overhang. It's this enzyme is also generating a five prime overhang. Five prime, three prime. Now, what is the next question? You can ligate the smaller restriction fragment produced in step one to the smaller restriction fragment produced in step two. Write out the sequence of the resulting recombinant fragment. So let me try. Let me try. So since these sequences are here, so A T T G A G. A, T, T, G, A, G from the first part. 
and the lower strand is going to be T A A. You can just go back and check those sequences C T C, and then there are some overhangs C T A G. C T A G. So this is coming from P S T Y one. Now I need to consider the smaller fragment coming from K S P two two one. Now what are those sequences? Those are G A T C A. And that's what they have asked. They have asked me to ligate it. Ligate it. So, since these are ends are compatible cohesive ends, they are going to form the hydrogen bonds first, and then with the help of the DNA ligase, they will get ligated. So, what is the smaller fragment which is coming from KSP two two one G A T C A, which we can write it here because those are compatible cohesive ends G A T C G A T C A C G T. A C maybe I can use different color. So what? Let me rewrite A T T G A G coming from B S T one five prime. And then three prime T A A C T C and then C T A G C T A G fine. Now let me change the color of the pen and what is the smaller fragment I am getting after digesting this double stranded dna with ksp221 it's g a t c a g a t c a what is g a t c a c g t g a t c a c g t c g t c c a c g C C A C G, fine. Then I need to complete the lower strand to five prime. So this is going to be three prime, five prime. C G T G G A C A A C G T. Make sure that we are forming a we are forming the hydrogen bonds with the Complementary nitrogenous bases. So you can see because the ends which were getting generated by the KSP KSP two two one as well as BST Y one were compatible. So they have formed the hydrogen bonds first, and then a later phosphodiester bond will form. So this these strands will get ligated. So this is the product which you are going to get after get after the ligation. Could you cut the fragment? So the fourth question is: Could you cut the fragment from step three with either BST Y one or KSP two two one? So Let me check. We'll check with the KSP two two one first, and its recognition sequence is T G A T C A. T G A T C A cutting after first T. T G A T C A. So where are those sequences? Can you find it? T G A T G A T G A T C A. No, so the resulting fragment I will not be able to cut it with a B K S P two two one. How about the B S T Y one? So let me change the color again. So if you and look at the recognition sequence, it recognizes R G A T C Y. So it recognizes a sequence R, which could be any purine, Y, any pyrimidine, and it cuts after the R. So let me search for the G A T C, and then we can look for those purine and pyrimidine. So A T T G A G, where is G A T C? G A T C. I can find it here. R is R. Yes, G is a purine. 
how about the pyrimidine at the end of c no it's again a purine so it's not going to it's this sequence which i'm going to get after the ligation is not going to cut by the ksp221 as well as bsty1 do we have any other sequence for the ga tcy let me check ga no no so the ligated product which we are going to get after after the digestion of the double stranded fragment with with bst y1 and ksp221 the product which we'll get those are not going to carry the restriction sites for ksp221 and bst y1 this was this was the thing which was asked in the second question remember many of the times what happens in case of the molecular cloning process we use two different restriction enzymes some of the times after the ligation of the product you might get those sites or even you, that can result in the generation of some additional restriction sites for the additional restriction enzyme so these are things are quite common and it's always advisable for a researcher to you know to to look for these sequences and to try to draw these sequences and to visualize it whether whether you know the restriction enzymes which we are going to use for the digestion process and once we will insert once we'll put my insert into the vector we'll do the ligation are those are those restriction enzymes are going to get generated or will that result or will that result in the generation of some additional restriction enzyme sites so it's always advisable to check these points when you are doing the molecular cloning so could you cut the fragment no now the third question was from the restriction mapping a simple question you are given a plasmid in order to map this plasmid you set up a series of restriction digest and obtain the following visual so this is the protocol which is widely used in the lab now what is given they have used enzymes like bamh1 sma1 kpn1 bgl2 for for digesting a plasmid and then they have mentioned the fragments the size of the fragments which was obtained after digestion so now what are the things which have been asked in the question approximate size of the plasmid draw a plasmid map which we can draw it in the next slide now one thing which we can directly write it here what is the approximate size of the plasmid so what you need to do you just add up these values so for example kpn1 if it's a plasmid and if it is generating a fragments two fragments of 3500 and 1500 it it tells me that it has a it has a two side because the dna is circular and the total length of the dna is going to be 3500 plus 1500 which is which is 5000 base pair or you can call it 5 kilo base pair same you you just add any of these numbers and you will get you will get the get the length you will get the approximate size of the plasmid coming back to the second question draw the plasmid back showing the sites for bam h1 and sma1 kpn1 and bgl2 so i've just copied the same information here no no i just need to draw a circular plasmid so ready now first thing i would advise you to focus more on the kpn1 because that is the restriction enzyme which is for for which there is a single digest mention as well as the double digest now if i can focus more on the fifth point the kpn1 is resulting in the generation of two fragments telling me that there are two sites for kpn1 of approximately 3500 and 1500 just for my scaling i will just divide this circle into quadrants of approximate size so that i'll be able to do the proper scaling so as i said it's of a 5 kb so consider each quadrant of approximately 13 or 12.5 12.5 kb now let's start with the kpn1 so i'll keep a site for kpn1 just random you can choose any of your favorite positions so i'm just writing the kpn1 here and the second should be aligned in such a way that it is going to generate 3500 and 1500 so let's considering that this is approximately 12.5 12.5 then i can place another arrow for kpn1 at this site so cool good so if i'm if i'm placing these two kpn1 sites in in such a way that it is going to result in in a 3500 not really i should rather move the other 
arrow a bit more. So not here because what I said, it's going to generate a fragment of 3,500 and 1,500. So yeah, so 12.5, 12.5, 25, and then approximately, approximately half of it is going to be 631, close to somewhere here, I'll draw somewhere here. So if we'll do these rough calculations, if I'm placing the KPN one sites in such a way, in such a position, it is going to generate a 1500 base pair fragment and 3500. What next? Look for double digest where the KPN1 is present. Now, one thing is very clear from fourth that if KPN1 has two sides and the double digest of KPN and BAM H1 is giving me three fragments, that means there is only one, there is only one site for BAM H1. There is only one site for BAM H1. So, so till now we have discovered KPN1 has two sites. BAM H1 has one site because in the double digest, the two fragments are supposed to come from KPN1 and, and the BAM H1 will the BAM H1 will give you the rest of the fragments. In this case, is only one fragment. So now, now I need to compare when I'm double digesting the BAM H1 double digesting this plasmid with the BAM H1 and KPN1. My 3500 band from the KP1, KPN1 remains intact. Now this 1500 is getting divided into 1500. Now, this information is very important. It tells me that the BAM H1 is not supposed to be located here, but somewhere in this region. And the digestion of this plasmid will with BAM H1 will result in the generation of in a double digestion of KPN and BAM H1 will result in the generation of generation of these many fragments. Now, as I said, 3500 remains intact. The 1500 is getting divided into 2500. So what should I do? Let me keep, uh, let me place an arrow for the BAM H1 side, which is going to be, if it's 12.56, you can do these rough calculations. And then somewhere here is going to be the site for BAM H1. So let me write these numbers. BAM H1, KPN1, 500 base pair, and the remaining BAM H1 and KPN1 is going to be 1000 and the remaining 3500. Fifth, fourth done. Now we'll take KPN1 and BGL2. Similar kind of information. You can deduce it from the third part. KPN1 has two sites, so it is going to generate two fragments. Where is this extra fragment coming from? From the site of the BGL2. So this gives me the information that BGL2 also has one site. Now we'll compare fifth with, with third. Now, if you can see, when you are comparing fifth with third, that means the single digest with the double digest, my, in this particular case, my 1500 band remains intact. My 1500 bands remains intact. The, the 3500 is getting divided into 2500 and 1000. What does this tell you? This tells me that BZL2 is located on this side, like, like in this 3500 reason. And which is dividing this 3500 reason into 2500 base pair and 1000 base pair. So let me let me put the arrow for the BGL2. So 12.5, 12.5 approximately somewhere close to here. BGL2. So fine, looking good to me. So KPN1, if you'll compare KPN1 and BGL2 double digest, it's going to give me if I'm only considering KPN1 and BGL2, it's going to give me 2,500 band, fine. It's going to give me 1,500 band, fine. And it's going to give me 1,000 base pair band, fine. What else I'm left with? So I'm done with fifth, fourth, third, and 
again we'll, we'll focus on the enzymes which is having a kpn1 let's focus on kpn1 and sma1 again this is giving me the information that this is giving me the information that kpn1 is resulting in the generation of two fragments which we have gathered the information from fifth part there is an extra band which is coming for sma1 so what does this tell me that sma1 has one site where is the site located let me do some basic visualization so so 3500 compare the two with the fifth 3500 band is not intact because that is the one which is getting like resulting in the generation of 3200 base pair fragment and 300 1500 band remains intact what does that tell me this is telling me that sma1 is located in an area of 3500 so it's it's located located on this side of the kpn1 sma1 and this this is resulting in the generation of 3200 3200 base pair fragment and a 300 because 1500 is intact so i don't need to bother about now what should i do like, like let's place rough calculation 12.5 6 somewhere here small one and your plasmid map i hope is ready because there are there are total four enzymes if i'm correct kpn1 bgl2 bamh1 sma1 kpn1 is having two sides while all the other enzymes are having one side so if these are done automatically these are going to be true just check so kpn1 and sma1 in this case is going to generate 300 and then from here to here it is going to generate me 3200 base pair seems all right to me just try to solve it by your own and please let me know if you have any questions in the comment section i hope these questions are now clear to each and every one of you have a good day thank you if you do have any questions please feel free to write it in the comment section